Okay. I'm going to roll a back roll for that. Do it. And uh, that is a 21. That hits. Roll damage. Nice. And then I did seven damage to it. So maximum amount. Seven is exactly what you needed. As you uh, hurl the axe at it, it cleaves the spider in two and smushes it up against the wall. As the hammer slams into the or the the axe slams into the ground uh, with a, a disgusting clatter against the body of the broken spider. Is there a bonus action or movement you would like to do? Um. Yeah, I'm gonna move about. I'm gonna move about ten more feet, just upward. Uh, so I imagine I'm either on the second level or right next to it. Yeah. But I'm just making my way up. Not like my full movement, just about enough to get up to contact this there. Okay. So I don't block anybody. All right. All right. At the top of the round, you hear, uh, Oi! Get back here, you blasted creatures! Um, and suddenly you hear a clanging sound as coming uh, through the doorway, you see a helmeted, bearded, uh, gorgeously long bearded with these big metal braids. This dwarf come running into the tower. Behind that dwarf, another dwarf, uh, as both of them uh, come in and they've each got these massive war hammers and they both cleave on the same uh, spider. Um, That is a 12, that hits, and that's a 12 plus four, that hits. Um, all right, uh, so between the two of them, they take out that first uh, spider. Um, there's now two spiders left. Uh, one of them is the one that's right next to you, Cyrell. The other one is the one that, um, so if you and Dala are here, the spider in between you is now dead, and there's a spider right here. And then there's a spider next to you. So spider, Cyrell, nothing. Dala, nothing, spider. That kind of makes sense. Um, hopefully a little bit. Uh, basically, if, if, if you and Dala are right there, there's a spider right here. That's what I'm trying to say. It's like a little love triangle of spider, Cyrell, and Dala. Kill the love triangle. A web of love, uh, okay. maybe? Top of the round, Dala. Uh. I'm gonna go for that spider that's... That I took a long time trying to tell you where it is. <laughs> <laughs> the one that's uh, right in pretty much like between us. Sure. Do it. Make an attack roll. Taking away the space between 20. us. 20. 20. Natural 20 or unnatural? 20? Uh, unnatural. Okay. All right. So go ahead and roll damage. And I hit. 14. 14, dang, yeah. you don't need All that right. inspiration. <laughs> right? All right, so yeah, you, uh, you, you bring the hammer down quite literally and you do smash uh, a couple of the legs off of that spider. Again, if it gets a turn, it will have disadvantage on its attack. That was a great, uh, great attack. Edrahel, you're up. All right, I keep making my, my way up the ladder to see. How is the trap door? How do you open the trap door? That's the trap door opens up and out. Um, it's no longer being rattled, and now that you're up here, uh, you don't sense taller. I don't sense taller at all anywhere? No, the last you noticed, uh, you felt that tower kind of shake and vibrate, uh, taller hiss and jump away, um, at which point uh, everything kind of calmed down up here. That happened after your last turn. Do I hear anything outside? You hear, make a perception check. All right, uh, that would be a 19. 19. Uh, you hear the sound of distant fighting um, off in the direction that Taller went. It appears that uh, the two dwarves that came into the tower are not the only ones in this area. Okay. Something I, is fighting the spider. I go out the trap door and I look around. Okay, uh, so you climb up the ladder, 
Uh, between the perception check and opening the trap door, that's going to take your action. You won't be able to attack this turn. But you do uh, get up to the roof. You look out, and about 30 feet away or so, you do see Taller the Hunter being swarmed by four dwarves. Cool. Nice. All right. Uh, do I see anything else around? Uh, at the tower. moment, no. You don't have time to really make the whole perimeter because it's, it's, a, it's a pretty wide tower. So you'd have to continue looking on your next turn. Okay. All right. Uh, is it possible for me now? Well, uh, yeah. Uh, can I take my shield out just in case? And my I'll allow it. Yeah, you can take uh, your shield out. Then I'm going to equip it. Yeah, because looking around doesn't really stop you from grabbing your shield. So, yeah, you can grab your shield while you're looking at taller. Uh, Haley, you're up. Cyrell, you're on deck. Okay, um, I'm going to start taking Cyrell's direction and, and slowly moving up the stairs. Um, and uh, I'm going to fight. I'm going to shoot again. Um, yeah, I guess I'm just not getting those arrows back. So, yeah, I'll shoot the spider that is... Because the one that Dala's attack, Dala attacked is still alive, right? Correct. Yeah, that one's looking pretty rough. Yeah, I'll, I'll get them. Okay. 21. Yeah, that hits. Roll damage. Uh, seven. Seven. Seven is enough. As you, uh, you fire your arrow, this one slams into the head of the spider, and it sort of uh, crunches and contorts and lets out a bit of a sort of a hissing whine before it slowly rolls over and all of its legs uh, curl in. There is now one spider left. That spider is untouched. Cyrell? Your turn. Uh, there's one spider that was knocked prone by the dwarves. Is that one dead, or is that one the one? That uh, that, that, w that one was knocked prone in attempting to attack. Uh, you guys, that's the one that the dwarves attacked and killed because they had advantage on it. So they both okay. snatched the pieces. Yeah. So the prone one is dead. Okay. So there's one spider left. Um, one spider and uh, the dwarves. Okay. Is the spider in melee range with anybody? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, um, it's actually, it's, it's right next to, to you. Okay. That's the one that's next to you. Okay. Uh, is there, can I position myself to flank it with anybody or is it just me? With the dwarves? Yeah. Yeah. I'd okay. say you're probably already flanking it with the dwarves. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm going to say, uh, well met dwarf friends. Thank you so much. Uh, appreciate your help. All the t all the while, like swinging at the, <laughs> the spider. Thank you. You're awesome. Oh my gosh! That's I thought we were dead because of my party, but I'm so <laughs> glad you are here. Uh, all right, all right. Make make your attack. Um, I will say that you're actually very encouraged by what happened. So if you need to, uh, everyone in the party, you now have a D6 of DM inspiration. Now um, Dala has two. Yes. I forgot I had one before. But anyways, yeah, uh, don't need it right now because I rolled a 24. Hey, that misses. <laughs> <laughs> it has an inverse <laughs> AC system. It's really complicated. Um, basically, you have to roll between a 16 and an 18 to hit. Uh, uh, and just got max damage. 11. 11? Wow. So the most you can do is 11, really? That's the most. If I... So I looked up the rules because I'm having holding my shield. I can't use my long story versatile. So I, yeah. I only do a 1d8. So That explains yeah. it. Okay. Um, I was also just poking fun at you because Dala does more damage. But I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> she, like, she like killed that thing almost with one blow. I'm like, right? come on, guys. I'm trying. 11 is still uh, significant. And that spider is now looking rough. As you bring your sword down, you are able to lop off a couple of its legs. Again, imposing disadvantage. Uh, which it is its turn. So it's going to attack. Uh, it's um, going to attack Dala. So does she have a uh, protector from you? If she is within five feet of me, she will. She would be, yeah. It's pretty okay. tight spaces down there. Yep. Well, I rolled a four and a 10. So even with a plus four and eight is going to miss. Uh, so it is unable. Uh, and it already had disadvantage. I don't know why I bothered asking. Um, so no matter what, it misses. And that's its turn, Nebuchadnezzar. You're up. There is one spider left which is wounded, and there are two dwarves. 
I attacked the dwarf. No, I'm joking. No, I was going to say, the dwarves aren't wounded yet. What are you going to do, Nebuchadnezzar? XP farm, you know? No, I'm, I'm going to... It's like, John, I think it's about time that we got to like, level three. No, I'm going to uh, I'm, I'm I'm throw my axe at, uh, at the spider. My other axe is not up to him. So my second one, I'm going to throw at the spider. All right. Uh, oop. Uh, I only got 10 to hit, so I imagine I missed. 10 does miss, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, so you have a DM inspiration. Do you want to spend it? No, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait until you embarrass time. yourself in front of your new dwarven friends. Uh, you know, Ooh. I'm willing to embarrass myself because my goal is the big, bigger glory. So I want to get out of here. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm, I'm, right. uh, I'm going to throw it. I'll miss it. Then, um, then I'm going to run down the stairs again. Okay. Nebuchadnezzar is trying to get over to Taller before it dies so he can soak up some of the uh, splash XP from, from killing Taller. <laughs> he just wants to tag it. Tag it before it goes. Exactly. Exactly. I just want to share in the, in the leveling up. All right. So, yeah. So, you throw your axe. Um, it does just miss. Uh, as Cyrell moves to attack that spider, he actually kind of gets in the way of your trajectory a little bit. And you have to adjust at the last second um, to avoid hitting him. But even though you don't hit the spider, thankfully, you avoid hitting uh, Cyrell. Uh, and I'm you know that I verbally blame Cyrell for this miss. It was definitely his fault. It was not my own incompetence, just so you know. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Really builds team cohesion there. Uh, Dala. <laughs> uh, actually, before Dala goes, it is the dwarves' turn, and they are both going to attack uh, that spider as well. And one of them's going to go, Oh, you're welcome. Um, he hits, and the other one hits as well. Uh, even with their base damage, uh, they kill that spider um, with both of their hammers. As they both kind of at the same time, their hammers come down and smash one hammer, uh, massive, again, this, this massive war hammer, right on the head of the spider. The other one bringing it down on the abdomen, and it smashes into the ground. Um, currently, there, all of those spiders are dead. Is there a dwarf exchange program we can participate in with our party? <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying this out loud, or is this just a thought that's yeah. <laughs> Yes, I am. I'm halfway chuckling. <laughs> halfway. So, it, it, like, is like, is like the end of the, the like immediate combat, or are we still in the same? Yeah, at game? the moment, your initiative is over. Um, for the moment. Even when I can see taller outside. Uh, yeah, because you guys are not in combat with Taller All right. at the moment. So, okay. so it's, it's yeah. more of like, uh, everyone tell me what you want to do real quick, and then we'll figure out uh, the order in which it happens. So, gonna, Nebuchadnezzar, what are you thinking? So, my connection is, uh, I tell the boys, oh, I love the chat, but I have a hot day waiting out, 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 outside for me. And then I'm going to pick up my hand axes and I'm going to start to move out to fight. Talk, 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 so. Okay. Uh, so you say that. And actually, um, both of the dwarves uh, are already ahead of you. Um, and you basically follow them out the door as those two dwarves are booking it around the tower uh, towards Taller. Talk too much, bro. I was talking as I was collecting, dog. You know what it is. <laughs> you guys... You guys start moving towards Taller. The other four of you, what do you want to do? Um, uh, I'm going to rescue. I was tracking which arrows got smashed and which arrows are still just in bodies. So I revived three arrows from the bodies. Cool. Adrahel, you could fire at Taller if you would like from where you are. Um, how is the situation? What can I see from the situation? Uh, Taller is currently getting its butt kicked by four dwarves, and you're watching as three more dwarves, one of them familiar to you, are all going ka chink ka chink ka chink as they run <laughs> towards Taller. Um, I smirk. That's the first thing that I do. And then, uh, I like <laughs> ball for that, please. <laughs> for, for the, um, I'm going to do what I said I was going to do before. Uh, I want to look around to see if there are any threats that are coming our way. So, is there anything that I can see? Make a perception check. Oh, boy. I mean, on these perception checks, man. All right, 17. It's not bad. 17. Uh, you do notice there were a couple spiders that were making their way towards the tower. Um, but with all of the commotion and with Taller being uh, 
overwhelmed at the moment, those spiders have turned around and are disappearing back inside the forest. All right. The only threat at the moment really is taller. Do I have enough time to uh, draw my bow and shoot a taller? Yes, you do. Yep. All right. Do it. And then I want to use a poison arrow, though. Okay. Um, we already noted the damage difference, correct? Yes. Cool. It's, uh, it's the same one plus uh, D6. Yes. Perfect. So, let's see. Oh, my bad. Um, I got to roll. That's important. All right. So, I think I hit. I hope I hit. It's supposed to be 22. 22? Let me double check the stat block here. For uh, yeah, that hits. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> See, I just have to be outside of a battle of an immediate, uh, immediate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When when you're not nearby, yeah. it's a lot less right? stressful. You can take your time. You know, you're not Legolas. You're not sledding down a stairwell killing orcs. What I'm saying. That's what I'm trying to get through. Not every elf is Legolas, man. It's okay. Don't put that on yourself. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. The, <laughs> All right, well, the truth shall set you free. Uh, uh, damage. By the way, I have been ticking away Taller's health secretly in the background, so I do know how much health Taller has. That is wonderful. For everyone watching online, I have everything. <laughs> Imaginary, I'll say. 14. Jeez, you guys are good. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right. Uh, so, as your arrow flies off and slams into the abdomen of Taller, uh, it kind of rears over a little bit, and it doesn't even really recognize where the arrow came from or what uh, attack is happening to it as it's being swarmed by dwarves uh, who appear slightly angry. Um, <laughs> let's see. Dala, what did you want to do? Man. Are you sticking okay. around in the tower? Or are you going to run outside towards the battle with Taller? Mm. I'm going to run... Uh run up the the tower the tower okay. yeah exactly. sure all right so you just you run up uh you run up the stairwell uh cyrell have we gotten to you i don't remember no nope. all right you're last then and then we get back to the dwarves and taller okay so the weapon i had grabbed before is that officially a, a lance yes that? yeah okay. treat it as a so, lance with reach and the the so it gives you 10 feet of reach yeah um Unfortunately, when I'm not mounted, it takes two hands, so I can't use it now. But I am going to sheath it, so I can use it when I have Onyx. Um, awesome. I am going to um, sheath my sword as well, grab the torch, because I'm not sure how light it is out there. Then I'm going to start running out towards the taller battle as well. Okay. Uh, as you do, you uh, see a, a familiar face running towards taller as well, and you see Will with a small short sword um, running towards the spider and he sees you and he goes, I thought you were dead. As, as uh, you guys kind of come diagonally towards each other as you're running towards the, the large spider. Uh, he looks terrified and yet determined and he doesn't break stride as he's running with you towards Taller. Um, do I have time to speak to him or? No? Uh, in a second, in a second. Nebuchadnezzar, uh, okay. you and the other two dwarves uh, join up on the battle. Uh, just roll a d20 for me real quick. Uh, I got a 12. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make an attack roll against Taller. <laughs> okay. I got a eight, 18. 18 hits. Okay, okay. Just barely. Get some. Oh, and I got maximum damage. 11. <laughs> 11 damage. Very nice. Okay. Uh, Taller is looking really rough. On its turn, it is going to attempt to escape and uh, leap into the trees and, and get away. Um, as it does, all of the dwarfs, including you, are going to get an attack of opportunity. So go ahead and make another attack roll. And okay. uh, I will roll for the seven dwarves here. And I'm going to make this a... Reckless attack to get an advantage on it. Go for it. Uh, I, I got I got ten. Do you want to use your inspiration? Uh, it's a D six. It may not work. It may not help. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure it's gonna help because if the yeah. eighteen barely hit, I'm actually surprised it's seventeen AC. So I don't think it's gonna matter. Okay. Yeah. 
Even with advantage, 10. Sorry, man. Yeah. So you, uh, you swing, but she just barely gets out of your reach. Um, however, uh, the rest of the dwarves, um, a couple of them grab onto the legs, and, and as Taller leaps away, uh, kind of pivots on two of the legs and ends up, instead of leaping away, kind of leaps into like a swing and swings around um, right into where uh, there's one dwarf that's not wearing a helmet. It's got uh, uh, brown, um, almost like a light brown hair with its beard is streaked with bits of, of red and even a little bit of gray at this point. Um, as uh, this dwarf uh, brings the hammer, uh, his, his big war hammer up. So um, Taller is kind of being spun around at this point with the momentum of, of her own leap. And as they come around, it's, it's almost like this dwarf was waiting for that to happen and brings his hammer down and slams it right onto Taller's head. Uh, Taller lets out this sort of sickening gurgle uh, before collapsing. I let a war cry he's gotta kind of celebrate with the other dwarves maybe give a few high fives maybe a few low fives maybe a few chest pumps you know there's there's actually in, instead of someone reaching over and smacking you and telling you to shut up uh, they they do also all kind of join in in, in the, the celebration um, and then the the one who who killed the the spider uh, pulls up uh the hammer wipes it sort of in the the grass and the muck puts it on his shoulder and and turns around and goes oi where are you looking at you nebuchadnezzar nebuchadnezzar silver dude good to see some of the good folk out here in these parts uh, silver dude yeah, yeah i know your family it's a good oi. name oh yeah so I'm we're looking you. around Son of Bilfer. Nice to meet you. Mm. Son of Bilfer. Well, anyway, I'll go down out these woods Bofer. with some pinky tall boys. What? Bofer. Bofer. Bofer, right, son of Bofer. Bofer, son of Bofer. Thank you, Bofer, son of Bofer. All I'm saying here is we're out here on the hunt. It's been a pretty good one. I'm glad to see you boys coming in with the kill and blow. I always can respect it. You know, I will say, I will say we did have eyes on. We, we could have handled it, but I'm glad for your assistance. Yeah, you definitely looked to be in charge of the situation when I arrived. This is a good job. Oh, yeah. Th thank you. Thank you. You know, not too bad yourself. No, you missed the last control. shot there. It's a little embarrassing. Oh, no. No, no, no. I'm just saying. <laughs> guts on my hammer. I could have took it, but I wanted to make sure that you had the glory. Because I've had plenty of glory. I've won plenty of battles. But you, maybe not a seasoned want to give you a chance to get a little bit of a story to tell the kids, you know. I mean, the kids need to, you know, I think they need a story. <laughs> yeah, stories are good. Your, uh, your armor there looks a little clean. Clean? I've been tossed in the dirt a few times. I don't know what you call clean. Pretty nasty. I've been smelling like a dead horse over here in these woods, you know. I haven't bathed in weeks. You know how we are. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> We are headed. Oh, deep in. We heard that there was a town not too far from here. Great presence of the sh sh shadow. Really hoping to get the old war warhammer uh, you use on it. You know, uh, some dark magic, magic magic out here in these woods and someone has to take care of it. So why not Nebuchadnezzar pulls pull the dude? war hammer off his shoulder and flips it over so that it's sort of hammered down and just sets it down. It balances on the tip with the, the handle sticking up into the, out of the air. He walks over and he puts a hand on your shoulder looking eye to eye with you. He goes, fair enough. Now look, you could, uh, between you and me, you could use the practice. Um, I don't quite understand. <laughs> with, with what? With like with, with women or something? Or what, 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 what are you referring to? You? I'm just saying you should have fun. I said, okay. Yeah. See, the ruins you said. Well, hmm. and he uh, he goes on to a bit of a story about how uh, him and his his troop um, had uh, wandered through that area recently, and there was actually uh, in a migrating orc warband uh, that had moved through the ruins um, yesterday, late yesterday evening, 
and uh, he said that you should probably count yourself lucky that you didn't encounter the uh, the orc warband. Uh, even his group decided that they should skirt the edges of the ruins, but that warband has since moved on. Uh, the Mirkwood um, has many roving bands of orcs and dark creatures, especially here in the heart of the Mirkwood. And uh, if you do want to go to the ruins, it is definitely unwelcoming. Uh, they don't tend to go into the ruins themselves. They're not really familiar with the layout or what is actually inside, but they do know that there was a band of orcs there yesterday, so keep your eye out. I said, well, if you want to come along, we can feel free for that. It's a dark woods out here. You know, to be quite frank with you, I've been hanging out with these tall folk. Apart from one of them, she's pretty short. But I, I could use some, some of my own kid. So if you'd like to come back, I'm sure there'll be plenty of glory to go around. It's a tempting offer, but uh, we have this tower. Make a persuasion check. Okay. Persuasion. Ooh. Uh, I got a 16. I was like, where the heck is my dice tray? And I realized it's under my notebook. Okay. Said 16? Yep. Kind of tosses the idea around in his head. He goes, mm. Pass. Have fun, though. I say, all right. So, what are you guys do do doing out here? Any any anyway? If you're not going to go out to source this whole thing, he looks at the tower and he looks back at you. He looks at the tower and he goes, "At the tower, it's my father's." Taking it back, brick brick by brick. If we have to. I said, all right, well, I wish you the best with it then. You know, you, know, you, you go on and tell you, tell like your stories. I'll say that maybe we won't see each other again. But, you know, this time next year when the Merc was all pure and full of light and all sorts of fairy folk, you just remember the person who caused that. Nebuchadnezzar Silverdew. And with that, I strut back to my party. All right, you say that, and he's like, oh, yeah, good luck with that. See you later. All right. See ya. Uh, Cyril and Will, you guys stood probably eight feet away or so hearing that whole conversation go down. Um, the dwarves just kind of give you a nod as they uh, take to start harvesting some different parts from Taller. Is there anything you'd like to say or, or do before turning around? Uh, yeah. First, Cyril plants a torch and looks at Will. And he's about to say something, but then he just grabs him and hugs him. And he says, good to see you, lad. I thought I told you to stay with the horses. We'll talk about that later, though. <laughs> and he looks at Bofri. Um, Do I get any sense about Bofri as a character or anything for my... Uh, it seems to be pure of heart. Did we uh, just make an enemy of him, partaking his father's staff? I was just I'm about to do that. <laughs> Cyril walks up to him and says, this tower there, you say, is your father's. You have a claim to all that belongs in it. Uh, we found some things. Uh, we, we want your permission, whether we can use it or not. If, if, if you are unwilling to part with them, then it shall be yours. And he uh, holds out the lance that he grabbed, and then he also points that there's some things in there in the tower. Hi, I appreciate the honesty. Uh, you're welcome to keep the lance. We got plenty of those, but uh, let's talk. And he uh, decides to follow you back towards the tower. And what do you show him that you found? From my understanding, the staff is still just kind of laying out in the open. So <laughs> I that, would just point uh, to that, her. As far as Inside I'm the tower. Inside <laughs> the tower. <though. laughs> um, I would just point to it. Um, and say some of our folk found that uh, seems impressive uh, might be handy on a trip but again you have claim to it 
he looks at it and he goes, I impressive. It's a good word for it. And he, uh, he picks it up and he kind of runs his, his hand along it. And when he does, um, some symbols in, in Dwarvish rune glow slightly in blue as he runs his hand along it. Um, and when he does that, uh, it says, uh, property of Bofer, the road warden and road warden is uh, one word and Nebuchadnezzar is your um, back. I'm guess Are you, did you go back inside the tower? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you would have spotted that and having already sort of recognized the staff when, uh, when that lit up, um, you're like, Oh yeah, it's the road warden staff. Yeah. Um, and uh, you recognize that as a, as a powerful staff, especially in the Mirkwood. Um, and uh, he looks at it. Uh, Beaufort looks at it. Oi, I had hoped to use this staff to uh, start rebuilding the old road piece by piece. Um, I do feel a bit of a debt to you, but do you think you'd be interested in helping me with this task? It would take quite some time, though. Cyril says... I'm also going to cut the accent because it keeps dropping, so it's... <laughs> it's good, though. Uh, <laughs> Cyril says, that is an interesting offer. I, too, am a fan of reclaiming what is old and restoring back to what is new, but we have a mission of our own. Uh, perhaps we could help some time in the future but i can only oh this quest will take several years so maybe come find me sometime bofri son of bofer and uh thank you for your aid tonight in retaking this tower for my father and he reaches out his arm to shake you terrell shakes and says thank you for showing up when you did i i fear what would have happened if you hadn't I do have one more favor to ask if there is any equipment or things that you do not need in the tower that might be of a benefit to our party. Uh, as you might have seen, we, we might need a little extra help along our way. Uh, well, honestly, looking around, we haven't really been here in very long, um, in quite some time, really. If you find anything other than this staff of value, you're welcome to it. Um, aside from that. Have I made my way down the tower? Yeah, I thought I, I would, so. I mean, by then I was hoping. I want to show the the mid, the uh, chain mail to him. It's like, Dwarf Lord, I took this from one of your fellow comrades that I believe fell in the defense of this tower. Uh, I was hoping to actually give it to our Hobbit friend here. However, I know that it might be of uh, sentimental value to you knowing that, well, you yourself made it and it's a government made and it's from your fellow comrades. So. Hmm. He uh, uh, reaches out and he grabs the Mithril and he looks it over. His eyes get a little misty. And he doesn't say anything for a minute. And he just looks back at you and he says, take it. Thank you. This is a point for um, eventually Cyro would like to check the tower to see if there's any benefit. Um, if there's any better armor that would fit him, I know it's mostly dwarven, uh, he would look for that. And then he would also encourage the party to um, maybe harvest some of the spider stuff so they can get poison again, things like that. Okay, so you guys uh, take to searching the tower and harvesting some spider bits, and uh, Bofri um, gets your attention again. He's like, uh, after a few minutes pass, um, and he's like, <clears throat> I've spoken with uh, our troop. If you're going to venture into the ruins, if you would be interested, I could spare two of my kin. Vidar and uh, Kona are willing to follow you. 
uh, into the ruins for a short time if you would like their aid. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. uh, from the smiles, I'll take that as a yes from everyone else too. Um, Alfred, are you willing to take chat with you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, uh, he lets out a bit program. of a laugh and he's like, no, 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 no. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar, he, he definitely needs to be there. So, uh, Vidar, Kona, um, and they, uh, they come up. Um, oh Vidar is uh, black hair, uh, black beard, um, a lot shorter than Bofri's. Uh, V-I-D-A-R, Vidar. Um, and uh, he's a, a young man, but, but not, uh, not green, uh, from what you can tell. And Kona, uh, he, uh, they introduce themselves. Kona is Vidar's sister. Um, and the two of them are uh, rather enthusiastic about going into the ruins and fighting whatever uh, shadow might be there. They're, they're interested in, in the glory of it. And with that, we are going to end today's session.